Anyone still remember the original Ford Puma that was built between 1997 and 2001? A small sports coupe built on the Fiesta platform. This is the all new Ford Puma and you obviously see it, it's more crossover, small SUV-ish alike. Does that still work and does it still somehow fit to that heritage? We'll find out in our full review here of the all new Ford Puma on Autogefühl, an exterior interior and the driving experience also showing you this titanium x-trim and also the st line everything of that in full hd full screen and full length let's go A very interesting and remarkable styling here for the front of the all-new Ford Puma. It does look very sporty indeed, although it sits on this Ford Fiesta platform, but a little bit higher, 5 centimeters or 2 inches. You can see here, this one is the Titanium X trim. It has a more, let's say, stylish and at the same time more crossover trim, a little bit more elegant. Here also with a chrome frame around. And then this contrasting off-road style in the lower part with a silver look. However, we also have the ST line for you. That one then comes with a black frame around the grill and has a sportier look. In both cases, we have those very big headlamps. They come standard with LED and also with this interesting daytime running light. Optionally, you can also get LED technology for the high beam and also for the turning indicators. 4 meters 19, 13 foot 7 or 165 inches is the length here of the Ford Puma in this new generation. And let's say that's about this longer than the Ford Fiesta or Ford EcoSport and about this shorter than the Ford Cougar. So it sits between the EcoSport and the Cougar lengthwise at least. So we can see here it has a rather sensual form. Also some sports coupe alike, especially here with this ending. A little bit cheap materials here around the frames. This one again as the Titanium X trim level has those crossover wheel arches. However then the ST line is a sportier look than with painted wheel arches. We have it there in the blue color. This one here a strong red tone. 18 inch wheels in this case here so Smaller ones available, 17 inch, but also bigger ones, 19 inch in the sport design pack. 19 is a little bit big for this kind of small car, isn't it? So 18 might be a good compromise indeed. And the ST line comes with a sport suspension, which will be a stiffer ride. Overall, there's titanium, titanium X, ST line and ST line X. The X is then, you know, with a little bit more trim and features always. Soon more into deals of that in the interior. What do you think about the exterior design? In the rear we see a strong Puma lettering. This one again with the titanium X trim here with a silver contrast in the lower part and an honest design. We do have the real exhaust underneath. There are no fake exhaust whatsoever and if you want to take another look at the ST line with a sporty look here it is also in our overlay pictures. So which one would you actually go for design wise? the Titanium here or Titanium X or rather the Sport here ST line. As for engines, there's a 1.5 liter diesel 4 cylinder with 120 horsepower and then the main engines will be the turbo petrol engines 1 liter of displacement, 3 cylinders and either the one we have here today 125 horsepower that one either without or with a MHF system, they call it then hybrid, although it's just a small hybrid, mild hybrid system, or with 155 horsepower, 
then the acceleration figure is a second faster so it's nine seconds or with this one here 10 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles now i'm really looking forward if this mf system here will have any advantages for the fuel economy soon more to that we usually have a six-speed manual gearbox later there will also be a seven-speed dual clutch transmission for the 125 horsepower version but then just without the mf system usually other manufacturers especially for example at volkswagen they say we only do the mfs with the automatic gearboxes here at ford it seems to be just the other way around Key, quite compact, good quality, open and close. Also close the electric hatch, so electric hatch is available, zoom more to that. You can also use the keyless entry if the ignition would be off, but we have it running at the moment. But first of all, door closing sound, actually quite solid. And now we, we get this warning sound, da -da -da, da -da -da, <laughs> because we have actually everything on with the displays. You can see how it looks like from here. Now also the beeping sound stopped. So first of all, the interior right here, titanium X trim with a normal round steering wheel. Also from a base, supposed to have leatherette steering wheel. That's of course cool. And we have those fabric seats. Those ones here are also zippable. So you can change the covers in this titanium X trim exclusively. Fabric on the inside here is also quite durable and looks nice with the gray one. Looks living room, Scandinavian living room we like, so nice design. So good idea and also then with those removable covers if you get you know any major stains on it and so on. Steering wheel on the left side you set the cruise control. On the right side you can change something from those digital instruments. It starts still with analog instruments, optional those 12.3 inch digital instruments. And what's also quite cool is that we have a fake wood interior and it feels matte and nice so it's a very good fake wood. Why not? And also the inside of the doors are remarkable. Here in the titanium X trim we have this fabric here with contour stitches. It feels nice, looks nice, pretty cool. Also some notable inside door pockets well maybe not for round bottles but for a lot of other clutter and we also have some shots from the ST line for you then at the inside of the doors you get for example at the red you get a different decor trim more carbon fiber like but also not real one and also a steering wheel with red contour stitches and it's a little sportier look definitely also you have sport seats where in the ST line you have sports with fabric and ST line X you get those sport seats here where you have some supposed to be animal skin on the outside that's of course not really necessary. Let's get inside and it is actually a little bit easier than getting in the Fiesta because we sit a little bit higher and therefore it's also a little bit more comfortable so when I put the seat all the way down with 1 meters 86 or 6 with 1 there is just a little bit of headroom left because this one does have the panoramic roof which goes in front and also in the rear so it's actually split and you can actually also open it gotta put the ignition on for that so open it like this and it's actually quite substantial opening and either way open or close it does leave a lot of light in here so that's actually pretty cool nice feature and by the way with manual covers for the front and the rear as well well and it's not the most comfortable seating position i have to say um, although it's maybe a little bit better than a fiesta but seating comfort for tall people is not top of the game i would say steering wheel can be moved in and out and also up and down it's a good process and this seat even has a seat massage function has a button here at the side well it's not like um, you know real very sophisticated massage like we know like from luxury vehicles but you know it's something but it's not an option i would say you know you need to have interior overview here we can 
see yeah fiesta platform definitely resembles that soft touch here with the dashboard then we have this fake matte wood element again good quality here as well so it's a nice addition definitely pretty thick steering wheel again would be a little bit different in the st line and those digital instruments really clear view so more details to that and an eight inch screen you can get right here but it's in this case also standard so the puma has a little bit higher equipment overall than the fiesta and this one the sig 3 system soon also more deals to that also apple carplay and android auto support still the volume knob but the cheap rubber surrounding right there so some of the interior parts yeah pretty cheaply done also in the lower climate unit right there but it's still good to have this climate unit yes and also you know ranging from 23 to 30k overall in price you can maybe also understand that seat heating in the lower part is available in the, um, even a heated steering wheel then in the very lower part there's also inductive charging for the smartphone and you can also plug the phone right here in with the cable for the car player and with auto connection six speed manual gearbox in this case then we have a drive mode selector in the lower part some cubby holes and also the adaptive cup holders last but not least this armrest with the leather red cover and when you put it up then you also have some more cubby holes underneath and one more usb charger oh fancy puma <laughs> visualization but again blocked by those messages so interesting we have a hybrid gauge here so when we are actually rolling and then it shows when it does recuperate so when you have the brakes then energy is gained back there to this um, smaller battery and that it's um, you know your left side speed right side rpms but you can also switch around something and when you have a root set we will see it while driving very soon then you will also have some gps information in this digital instrument that's of course also another advantage now deals to the screen as all we touch and this is then the gps which is somewhat okay not the best one not the worst one you can get along with it um but yeah maybe use the android auto or apple carplay gps it will be a little bit better then you can go back to the you know where you were actually this is the home screen then and you can add the phone via bluetooth or then with the cable settings here you can scroll through that and what's for example interesting when i press this special seat button here legs left next to the seat there's also some settings here for different parts of the seats in the screen and also this massage function which changes a little bit then in the seat and it's interesting to have but again not the most sophisticated one and when you put in the cable then of the phone then we'll have the apple carplay or android auto if it would be an android phone there it is this is a nice integration pretty clear also and this b and o optional sound system is actually pretty cool um has some notable bass as well so and a very crystal clear sound especially for this price segment so that's a um, pleasant surprise only thing still missing here with the sync 3 when you want to use carplay and the car internal gps Ah, there they're working because then it switches to the maps of the iPhone in this case. You can say you want to use that anyway, but if you have a limited data usage, then of course it can be a problem. Yeah, that happens after a while. So, um, guess the card wants to tell me, Thomas, finally finish up with the infotainment system. But one more, I want to show you the rear view camera, which has a you know okay resolution, not the best one, not the worst ones, and here the helping lights adapt accordingly. Well, it's also you know, against the light at the moment, but good to have it here over the whole screen. Even though it's just a small car, always nice to have it. So let's get in the rear. And I mean, it's not primarily vehicle thought out to carry four tall adults. And yeah, I don't fit here when I am actually driving. So yeah, hitting my knees right there. Um, also headroom wise, <laughs> hello and goodbye. So yeah, I do fit in here, but it's not like, you know, so I have to be aware of that. There actually the Ford EcoSport is definitely better because it has a better you know, package on the inside. So here I would rather say emergency seats for tall adults. Also zippable by the way here for the rear seats. That's better than for the kids. So rather for kids also here with ISO fixed and with you know wheelchair seat, you 
flip the seats already from here by the way soon take a look from the trunk but it already has this nice styling here with the fabric also from the titanium extrem and just some cubby hole in the middle part so no additional chargers pretty basic but you also have a part of the panoramic roof here, which you can also close or open manually. And finally, a lot to show you with the trunk here. First of all, we have the foot kick opening mechanism for the electric hatch. That's quite nice. And then we have this, you know, pretty well sized trunk overall. So it's 456 liters overall, but zoom more to that. 73 centimeters in length, actually and in width it's a little bit less than a meter and the height here just to this cover is yeah is about 40 centimeters that's okay interesting by the way this top cover is a, on the one hand a good solution because it's mount on the top part so you are all free and flexible here however those holders here at the side one of those got uh, loose um, already so you can clip them in again but yeah this has pro and cons this um construction <laughs> in this case so there you can put up this cover here that's interesting also fix it and then you have this so-called mega box here 50 kilos or 80 liters and you can even put wet stuff in there because when you remove this lower cover there is actually an opening to the floor uh, so like this and then you can see here you can really look through the ground so you can you know maybe go with the dog and wash the paws I, I, I don't know so um maybe it's like you know even for surfing or um, something like water sports that might be good or um, cold beverages put it full of ice um, yeah that could be something it's actually also quite deep so this one here is over 30 centimeters deep so yeah therefore yeah 35 centimeters and then you could put maybe like from there to the top here like a you know for a plant transport or something that would be another use case and last but not least what about the overall length so because we have not a fixed cover here that goes from the bottom so it, the one from the top we can easier flip the seats right here top tether the back part and then we go with 147 centimeters welcome to thomas's driving lounge with the all-new ford puma and yeah let's give this one liter three cylinder engine a little boost first gear second gear and drive a little bit more agile because i mean the heritage is a small sports coupe does this one here as a crossover or a small SUV hold up to the heritage? Yeah, I think it does. Fiesta platform, it's still quite agile to drive, although it's a little bit higher, but actually quite cool. And I mean, this is almost like a rally heritage we have here now. So it's actually quite a, quite a lot of fun. Pretty cool. Found some interesting roads here for you. Why not? So motorway driving here at 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour and I mean the road surface here is actually quite rough and it's not super silent as for the road or tire noise but again it's also the road as for wind noise it's actually quite okay so there's no no disturbing wind stuff here going on somewhere so and especially at lower speeds it's even better but probably not best in segment but also not worst in segment again it's also about the road We'll also keep you updated how it is with a different surface right here then there is the blind spot monitor they are flashing in the side mirrors this is part of the assistance systems package which you should get that's definitely very helpful you do have the cruise control right here at the steering wheel it's also an adaptive one then again included in this package and then you can set it here with the left thumb and the distance to the car in front of you is being kept it also works here although we have the manual gearbox this mild hybrid system seems to work because we could score some decent fuel economy for such a small engine 5.5 liters on one kilometers that's really decent that's um, more than 40 mpg us and yeah close even to 50 mpg uk so it's really cool and also this six-speed gearbox which are not using that frequent of course on the motorway 
It's really very good to use, so very smooth shifting process up to the fifth one again and it's totally fine. Since we're driving here the 125 horsepower version, so the less stronger one of the turbo version, you might ask yourself, yeah, is that, is that still really enough? I mean, there's not such a big difference between those two horsepower versions. This one here will be also the most important one. The MHF indeed seems to have good effect on fuel economy and since you do have the turbo, you still have you know, some power reserves here, for example, when you are at 100 or like now at about 90 and accelerate a little bit out, third gear, 100, 120. So that's still okay. It's of course no rocket, it's supposed to be rather a budget vehicle. Um, but still, since you have the turbo, you can still accelerate on the motorway, that's possible. Also with those digital instruments, which are optional or then included in one of the higher trims. Got the GPS information right there, so I have the GPS here on the right side and also in the center screen, so that's definitely very helpful. And so I don't have to look over right there, I can just have the central view indeed. Something I always recognize, especially when it's like a cloudy sky, is I do see those lines from the heated windscreen. Some see them, some do not. I do see them. Don't like it that, that much. But then again, when it's winter time, it's really good to have this heated front screen when you are in like you know outside park and don't have like a basement garage and so on. So the assistant systems work quite well and I have to say, I mean, the upright seating position here in comparison to a Fiesta, where you sit five centimeters or two inches higher, that's also quite good. So it's indeed a little bit more comfortable than in the Ford Fiesta. However, especially for tall people, I would still not say that this is a vehicle I would want to go for like an hour long road trip. Um, you know, there are more suitable vehicles for that. In this case, probably also bigger ones or some of the competitors because the seating comfort is not the best one. Yet again, what Ford really does very well is all of the driving features, you know, like the steering, how you feel that, you know, is really direct. It gives you a good connection from driver, steering input, car and the road. That's really cool. Then the shifting also here when you're you know, more roundabouts, city traffic and so on. Shifting is so crisp and precise, so it's one of the very rare cars where I wouldn't have a problem to go for a manual gearbox. There will be an automatic gearbox later on for this, for this 125 horsepower engine without the MF, um, however. That's quite strange, um, but yeah, that's, that's how it is. But again, the manual gearbox that does actually do fine. Yeah, it's actually quite fun to put in the gears and that's really cool, definitely. Also, now again, back to the third gear. Also, the throttle and the brake input is really on point. Suspension-wise, I did pick this car as main vehicle on purpose because it does not have the sport suspension, and I would not advise for this vehicle for the sport suspension. We already have those 18-inch wheels mounted. You can go smaller if you want a little bit more comfort, but they do actually quite fine. So as long as you don't have the sport suspension, we also have enough comfort and it is already sporty enough, you know. There is still this sporty Ford Fiesta vibe because we have the same platform. So it doesn't feel much less sportier. Yes, the Fiesta does move a little bit more agile. This one and again with a little higher positioning, maybe a little bit more comfort. So there is a notable difference, yes, but still, it's a small car, it's agile, it has this, you know, you know this Ford drive, driving dynamics with the good suspension, which they usually do quite well, and the gearbox and the steering. So all of the driving characteristics, usually in our Ford reviews, is the thing where they, you know, score best, score most. And the least things, usually like, you know, interior look and feel and you know, seating comfort, that's where they don't do that well. Um, however, in this case also with the Titanium X trim, you see it also here while driving, it's quite cozy. We have this fabric here, then this fake wood, which feels really real. So um, in this case here, it does make a more premium feel than just a Fiesta, for example. That's also because they wanted to make the Puma a little bit more exclusive.
So controlling the GPS, by the way, while driving is um, yeah, not the best, but you can actually do that because it stands out like this. And again, if I just want to look at the next intersection coming, then I can always take a look at those digital instruments right there. And even with some acceleration, we really remain with this quite good fuel economy figure. So um, really positive about that. So let's see, um, there are different driving modes available. It's like normal, eco, in eco mode, the throttle input is being reduced just a little bit. Now we go to a little bit of a smaller B road. Yeah, definitely you feel that in eco mode, the throttle input is not that, um, you know, not that high. So supposed to save a little bit of fuel. A little, bit, a little more countryside. You know, what's always the case is when you use the brakes with the MF system that you get some recuperation into that battery and then it is being used, you know, for a little bit more boost for the electric consumers and so on and then it saves fuel. So when you have the sports mode, it's directly the opposite. So throttle input is being increased. If you were to have the automatic gearbox, it would also change shifting characteristics and so on. So it's a little bit crisper, everything. But of course, when you have manual gearbox, it doesn't make such a difference altogether. Now we also have something on an uneven road from time to time, some potholes and so on. And so far, the suspension is um, holding up quite good for that. And you know, well, hmm, the GPS didn't predict that. Interesting. That's maybe a road that is still being built. Yeah, probably this is a GPS from the future. Hmm. Interesting. But that makes us ease the car around and show you it's actually quite easy to ease it around. So again, the compact dimensions, nice view now, right here, way on the back. Yeah, why not? That's life and auto fuel, more authentic driving parts, so on. So overall, a very good driving experience here with the Ford Puma in, you know, in different aspects, could be a little bit more silent on the motorway, that's maybe, and a little bit more seating comfort, but all other driving features, steering, suspension, steering input especially, and also the shifting here, really good, and also with a decent fuel economy. And I think also that 125 horsepower version will be enough indeed for you. It's, you know, it doesn't need to be actually the 155 horsepower. If you want to spend a little bit more extra money, and also want to have a little bit more boost, I mean, sure, why not? You know, then you can go for that. And this MHEF system seems to be a quite good development already. So we're getting onto the road again, so we find our way. Now the next stop sign, and we can also give you an acceleration from standstill, that will also be quite interesting. Also, how the um, front axle speed reacting when I push it a little bit more. Yeah, it does steer me a little bit, but it's actually quite okay. That's 80 kilometers an hour already. So you see, quite decent, especially from standstill, because this platform here, this Fiesta platform, is actually quite light, and that's definitely very helpful. And is it here or? No, not here. <laughs> so today the GPS route is quite funny. But again, rear view camera, easing the car around, fast to the front. So something like this, you can do only with a small car. If I would have a bigger car, I would need, you know, like a little bit more time to ease the back and forth around. So we can just be a little bit on the discovery way with you here today. Back to second gear. Maybe this would be a situation where you could drive in a higher gear with the little bit more horsepower version that could work actually but overall I think I'm really happy that I picked this version here for you today. Also good grip again from the steering wheel has a good size and as I told you earlier supposed to be also leather red surface it depends maybe on the trim level couldn't read that in the price list but it started at least with the leather red cover it's also a good decision that Ford took here and of course, those titanium X seats here with those, you know, zippable covers. Also pretty nice idea because some people might say, yeah, you know, when I, when I have kids and, you know, maybe drive a little bit more dynamic and then they spill some drinks or whatever um, on the seats. I need like a slick surface, but that, that's really not needed here. 
so you can also wash them then on demand. So pretty interesting. So now uphill acceleration still with this turbo, no problem. That's so interesting. We had this GPS is leading us here today. Shall we drive here? Maybe a little bit softer. I think. No, that's okay. Let's do a little bit soft off-roading. That's why not, man. <laughs> so now some potholes and it's actually quite decent from the suspension, so it's not too uncomfortable. It's quite okay. I mean, after all, it's like a crossover SUV, so why not? The only thing is that it might get a little bit dirty now, so we have a dust trail behind us. But always happy to test different situations also here in our driving reviews. Yeah, it's actually quite fun, you know, going a little bit sideways and sliding with it. I mean, it's front wheel drive only, but it's still always fun to drive a little bit soft off, soft off road at least. <laughs> So, and now the 155 horsepower turbo petrol engine and the ST Line X. First of all, let's you know find some out some acceleration difference. 50 kilometers to 90. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, like the last second was missing because I could push up the second gear. I wanted to test that, like to 85 something, and then you know was hitting the rev limiter, but was almost, you know, so 50 to 85 that was possible in a second here. But you see, it has a little bit better punch. So the acceleration difference is, again, the, um, the non-MHF system, 10 seconds, zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Then the 125 horsepower turbo petrol with the MF 9.8. So that's a little different from this electric boost. And then this one here, 155 horsepower, nine seconds, so a second faster. And you know, it is somewhat notable, so a little bit more punch. However, it's not the biggest difference. It's not that you would say you drive a completely different engine. It is the same engine, just a little bit different tune electronic wise. Yeah, nice tune, man. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe it's just about, you know, spending some more money or not. But then again, I always, for durability reasons, rather say pick the biggest displacement available and the lowest horsepower spec for an engine, but yeah, one liter of displacement, you know. However, fuel economy-wise, those new engines here and also with the MF system, they do actually work. So that's pretty cool. And this will also be the very same here. So I said earlier, 5.5 liters, but when you really try to keep it calm. Six liters is more realistic on one kilometers. So that's then 39 mpg US, 47 mpg UK. And this will be the very same with this engine when you drive it the same way. And you also drive it in a calm way. So maybe, not sure if like with 30 horsepower more, you wanna push a little bit more, I guess not. So fuel economy will more or less be the same between those systems with the MF included each. Then, well, we do have the sport suspension in here. The sport suspension does automatically come with the ST line. The price list does not offer a choice to depick it. Maybe you can ask your dealer. Probably it's not possible, at least not according to the price list or configurator. So, an ST line X just builds on the ST line and then adds some more features. It's the same with the titanium, so titanium and titanium X. X is just, you know, some more equipment extra. So both ST line and ST line X do come with this sports suspension right here. And it is a little bit stiffer, yes, but it's not, you know, not stiff in a way like BMW M Sports fixed suspension which we, for example, had in the X1 or X2 and has and let's like, say like, wow, that's like, mm, shouldn't go for that ever. You do have more comfort with the normal suspension, yes. 
it is notable, but it's not like catastrophic or something. So, you know, my favorite pick actually would be the Titanium, or let's say the Titanium X, because it has those, you know, special fabric covers then on the inside. And I was like with the wood and stuff with the fake wood, but on the outside the ST line. So that <laughs> would be my favorite pick, actually. Um, that won't be possible, especially our friends in the UK. Um, they tend to pick the ST line, and you know I'm happy to say yes, more comfort without the sport suspension, but it's still okay. You do have some more feedback than here when you're going in the slalom. That does fit the vehicle and indeed with the sport suspension it does come closer to the original Ford Puma. Beautiful also with those white villages here in southern Spain by the way. So we have a nice route here for you as well. Um, we have some uneven roads here. You feel maybe a little bit more. Yeah, but still somewhat okay. So. 19 inch wheels then together with the sport suspension that might get too rough but here with the 18 inch it's still okay the shifting lever is also a little bit different we have this um, you know this metal cover from that yeah why not doesn't make too much of a difference and the steering wheel is also different a little bit thicker as for the grip um, it's also nice but it's not like a huge difference so I also had fun driving the other one Overall, indeed, you do have the feeling that the ST line or ST line X is a little bit sporter than the titanium one. You know, we have the combination here, a little bit more horsepower, but that is not connected to the trim level. That's just in this very car. Sooner or later, you can get then all the trims with all the different engines. Then, of course, different steering, wheels, just for the visual part, shifting. The suspension this is actually the major difference, but again, not absolute different car. You know, it was like a pothole. That's something you feel a little bit harsher than in this sport suspension. Now we can get a little bit more agile driving fun once more here. Really nice with this vehicle. And when I leave the throttle, I can also check those hybrid gauges again. Then the battery is recharging, recuperating. Pretty helpful, and that's also good for the fuel economy. And then at some point, I also see on the right side when the electric boost is being activated. So that's actually pretty efficient. Then, if you just leave the throttle, or even if you're on the brakes, then you see there's a recuperation. If you want to look at that gauge all the time, of course. And with the coasting or sailing function that is also included here. So how does that work? So first of all. Most of the time, probably, it will be better to use the recuperation when I just leave the throttle, especially if I want to reduce speed. However, if you want to roll rather, then you could, so you don't want to really reduce the speed, you could theoretically press the clutch, and then the RPMs, after a while, um, now, drop to 1000. Not completely deactivated, like with other, you know, sophisticated sailing modes. The same happens when I just put it in neutral, then it drops to 1000, but the engine is not completely shut off. So we do have those new sophisticated systems like, you know, Audi, BMW, Mercedes and so on, they are of course more expensive, and combined with the automatic gearbox, that's probably also a thing, they can also roll or coast with shutting the engine off at like 100 kilometers an hour or something. Not possible here, but it drops to 1000 and it also deactivates one of the cylinders. So you're really running on two cylinders then. That's pretty remarkable. However, when does it shut off completely? So there's no one behind us. That's just something when you're actually really slow and approaching a trip now, like below 20 kilometers an hour, zero, and we're rolling as soon as I put in the gear, it's getting on again. So this is a function like an. Um, sophisticated stop-start mechanism, so when you're rolling towards the traffic light and then already the two, three seconds ahead before you're coming to a full stop, then already the engine is dropping to zero RPMs and this is also then again supposed to save some more fuel. So very interesting with this MF system here, quite a lot of times we hadn't had that, you know, big effect on the fuel economy, but here Obviously, it does make sense. That's, of course, very interesting. And yeah, there was a Toyota CHR facing towards us with a real hybrid system, so not only for the 8-volt port net. 
So that's also something different. But again, the fuel economy difference is not that huge. And again, here in those windy corners towards Ronda, beautiful roads always, this car shows its true potential. And although it is a little bit put up, crossover SUV style-ish, it still has a remarkable driving feeling from the steering input here and also with a little bit stiffer suspension, which is totally fine then for those even roads. And you know, the whole natural driving feeling they could create here with the crisp shifting, and again, the steering input, and yeah, a little bit better noise insulation, especially at those speeds, you like 70, 80 kilometers an hour. That's really good then. So only when you're getting at really you know, higher speeds on the motorway. And again, hybrid drive. Not sure if we should, should call it hybrid, but definitely mild hybrid or MHF. And I always like to have those new technologies, a lot to talk about, and especially when they do work. So, biggest thing we can take away from, MF system, pretty cool, works fuel economy-wise. If it's 125 or 155 horsepower, not such a big difference. ST line looks way cooler on the outside, yes, but maybe you prefer it otherwise, want more of that, that crossover look. And good finding for me is that the sport suspension is not as stiff as expected. So that's pretty cool. So probably, yeah, not sure. Well, the interior is nicer in the Titanium or Titanium X, I think, you know, but that's, you know, something else you, you might think about. So. Yeah, I would definitely like at the end of the day ST line on the exterior and titanium X on the interior. That's my favorite pick for the day. It's not possible, but maybe you Ford guys, product managers, if you're watching this. Yeah, we have a lot of um, automotive manufacturer product managers always watching our reviews because they can compare the different vehicles. And so all greetings to you then, shout out. Maybe if you're watching this from Ford, maybe you offer an, like, an ST line titanium X for me please. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool, right? So what's your take, guys? Please tell me in the comments, would you go for the Titanium or Titanium X or the ST line, ST line X, which would be your choice? And what do you think also about driving this MF system here? And of course, I leave you then here with another nice corners here, road towards Ronda. Yeah, in the past you could drive a little bit faster here. Now they really have reduced the speed because some guys were exceedingly speeding this one, especially motorbikes. Um, there were also some fierce accidents, so you can also understand that they reduced the speed here right now. Still quite cool to drive it here with about 60 kilometers an hour. Was a little bit more fun in the past, but I mean, safety first, of course. So, some more corners here with this beautiful landscape in southern Spain, and then we'll hop on over back to the red car with the very final conclusion for the day. to our conclusion for today with the all-new Ford Puma. Yes, it's, you know, it does work actually, so it's not too different from the original concept, you know, from the 2000s. So it is a sporty ride, yes, it's also on the Fiesta platform. Yeah, a little bit higher, but that's also then giving you a little bit more seating comfort. Compact dimensions, so you get along in the city very well. Interesting ideas with those zippable seats, for example, and also with this special box in the trunk. So why not? And a little bit more comfort, a little bit higher than a Fiesta without, you know, having too much other compromises and so on. And I think also the interior quality, we see a little bit more different features. For example, also this fabric at the inside of the door, special here for the Titanium X trim. So indeed something where Ford wasn't that good so far, as for the interior look and feel, also with this fake wood, especially in the Titanium X trim, better, I think. The ST line is sportier, yes, especially also on the exterior. Really crisp driving scenario here with the good steering input. The shifting then, which is also pretty cool with Ford, and also, you know, that you have a connected feel, you know, steering, driver, car, and so on. So, what do you think about this one here? Still quite good price-performance deal. Leave us your comments, and see us next time.